Welcome to St. Francis of Assisi, American National Catholic Church. Today we are celebrating the third Sunday of Lent. Today's Mass is offered in memory of Albi Nizalek. Please stand as we welcome our celebrants, Father G.D. and Bishop George. Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. It's nice to, uh, uh, to uh, be here with all of you today. I was in Connecticut last Sunday at our parish up there. And as you know, I always miss you and I always pray for you, right? And so today as we gather on this third Sunday of Lent, we are going to hear how God reminds us again and again how he is always active in our world. How this God who announces to Moses that I am who am, ego sum qui sum est, that it is this God who is, the, 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 is our existence, is with us in the great and the small moments of our life. As we do always, we take a moment to call to mind our failings and our shortcomings. We come aware of our need for God's healing grace and mercy, and so together we say, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned through my own fault in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. And I ask, Blessed Mary, the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. God, the Father, mercy to the death and resurrection of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, has sent the Holy Spirit among us for the forgiveness of sins. Through the ministry of the Church, may God grant you pardon and peace, and I absolve you of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And let us pray. God of salvation, we stand before you on holy ground, for your name is glorified and your mercy revealed, wherever your mighty deeds are remembered. Since you are holy and forbearing, turn us from every rash and shallow judgment to seek the ways of repentance. We ask this through Christ, our deliverance and hope, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit and mighty God forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
We're reading our, from, of, from the book of Exodus. One day, while Moses was taking care of his, his sheep, care of the sheep he, that belonged to his father-in-law, Jephro, he led the sheep to the mountain of Horeb, God's holy mountain. While Moses was there, he was a he saw a bush burning, but it wasn't burning up. So he said so Moses said to himself, I'm going to go to go closer so I can see this better. How how can it be that this bush is burning but it isn't being burned up? God called from the bush, Moses, Moses. Moses said, here I am. Then God said, don't come any closer. And take off your shoes, for this place where you're standing is the holy ground. I am the God of your people. I am God of Abraham. I am God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. Moses put his hands over his eyes because he was afraid to look at God. Then God says, said, I have seen how much my people are suffering in Egypt. I have heard them cry for help, and I have come to free them and bring them away from Egypt to a wonderful place, a land filled with, mi with milk and honey. Now go, I'm, I am sending you to bring the people away from Egypt. Then Moses asked God, when I tell the people you sent me, they will, will ask me what your name is. What shall I tell them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. Tell them my name is I am, and I sent you to them. My name is, and this is how I want it, it to be remembered forever. The word of the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. his holy name. He pardons all your iniquities. He heals all your ills. The Lord is kind and merciful. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And forget not all his benefits. He redeems your life from destruction. He crowns you with kindness and compassion. The Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord secures justice and the rights of all the oppressed. He has
has made known his ways to Moses and his deeds to the children of Israel. The Lord is kind and merciful. Merciful and gracious is the Lord, slow to anger and abounding in kindness. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so surpassing is his kindness toward those who fear him. The Lord is kind and merciful. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, that our ancestors were all under the cloud, and all passed through the sea, and all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and they all ate the same spiritual food, and all drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank from the spiritual rock that followed them, and the rock was Christ. Nevertheless, God was not pleased with most of them, and they were struck down in the wilderness. Now these things occurred as examples for us, so that we might not do evil as they did, and do not complain as some of them did, and were destroyed by the destroyer. So these things happened to them to serve as an example, and they were written down to instruct us. So, on whom the ends of the ages have come. So if you think that you are standing, watch out that you do not fall. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Sisters, the Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus told the people this story. A man had a fig tree growing in his vineyard. One day, he went out to pick some figs, but he did not find any. So he said to the gardener, for three years, I have come looking for figs on this tree, and I haven't found any yet. 
chop it down. Why should it take up space? The gardener answered, Master, leave it for another year. I'll dig around it and put some manure on it to make it grow. Maybe it will have figs on, on it the next year. If it doesn't, you can have it cut down. Brothers and sisters, the good news of salvation, the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. By the words of the Holy Gospel, Mary, seem to be by the way. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. What a wonderful job, right? What a wonderful job uh, with the readings and, and, uh, and, our, and our altar service today, Lila and Victoria. I can tell them apart now because uh, uh, Lila has her hair cut, right? So Victoria is threatening me. She's going to get her hair cut, though, right? So, so that I won't be able to tell them apart. Uh, Tariq, who is, uh, is leading us in song, is doing a wonderful job, but he uh, apologized this morning and said he's at the end of an illness, so his voice is a little phlegmy. And I said, oh, it'll be a nice whiskey voice, right? So, right? So, uh, so I think he's doing a great job. So where are the children? Come out here with me. Can you come with me for a minute? Where's all the kids? Come on. Let's, uh, come on out here. Let's sit down. I'm going to sit on this, this stool here. Let's all sit down on the floor here. So, um, uh, so tell me what you're hearing. Come on. Come on up. Uh, where's Sean? Uh, so what are you hearing in the scripture today? What did you hear today? Oh, you're all good Catholics. Nobody's making eye contact, right? So, <laughs> Yeah, so right, right? It's like, I'm not going to answer, right? So, so listen, this is what I was thinking a little bit about today. I was so excited. I was a little nervous that you guys were doing this. Um, but I was so excited because in so many ways, sometimes I think when you come to church, your parents love you so much and you love them that they want you to be exposed to this love of God that we experience. And mostly the way that we experience the love of God as adults is often by our encounter with God in the scripture. And so the scripture is for us the word of God. But sometimes it may be confusing or it may sound like there's not a lot of love in there. But this reading today from Exodus, that where is uh, where's, uh, Clodagh? You did such a wonderful job, right? This reading from Exodus, it's the beginning in a sense of our salvation history. And so God encounters Moses. Moses is like a little bit like me and you, right? He was going along his business he was uh, living a pretty good life. He lived in the palace. But all of a sudden, God reminded Moses that there was something important he wanted him to do. And that was to lead his people from oppression to freedom, right? And so sometimes you and I know this in important ways. When we are kind of going about what we do and we make a mistake and we can make uh, some, uh, some repairs to that mistake, it gives us a sense of freedom. It makes us grow up a little bit. It lets us know that we can trust those people in our life a little bit. So Moses is tell, tell, uh, God is telling Moses, I want you to do something. And Moses is saying, no, 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 send my brother. Moses was trying to throw his brother Aaron under the bus, right? And so, so, uh, so God appears to Moses in a burning bush. What's interesting about the burning bush? Yeah. It was not burning up. It wasn't burning up, right? So the, the bush was on fire, but it wasn't being consumed. That's sometimes what love does for us, right? It, it so energizes us and it makes us feel maybe so excited, but it doesn't consume us, right? It, it changes us, right? But it doesn't consume us. God allows us to be who we are. God allows us to be who he created us to be because we are some of God's greatest gifts. And he doesn't want us to be anything else, right? He wants us to be exactly who we are. And so that when God's love lives in us, right, it might feel like it's a fire within us, but it doesn't consume us, right? It maybe energizes us, makes us want to be better people, right, for the people that we love, right? Sometimes when you do something at home and you know you're not supposed to do it, maybe when you realize that and you, and you, and you correct that, that's your love, right? That's the love that you have for your mom and dad and the respect that you have for your brothers and sisters that makes us want to be better people, right? Does that make sense? And then what I love, what, what, uh, what uh, Sean read in, in from St. Paul's letter to the Corinthians, it's a warning for all of us, right? When you think you're standing, be careful, right? That you don't fall, right? So sometimes you know that. We've all had that experience when we think we're kind of 100% right and all of a sudden we're wrong, right? 
then we have to acknowledge that. So there's a little bit of what, what, uh, what St. Paul is reminding us is to remember that we need God and we need each other, right? And remember that, that if we do that, we can move in loving ways with each other. This parable that we hear today, parable means story, right? And so Jesus often spoke in stories. I'm not the best at it. Is this boring you, right? Are you guys, right? No, no, nobody's answering me, right? But, but, but Jesus, no, Sean's like, no. Uh, so here's the thing, this idea that God speaks to us in ways that we understand it. So there was a fig tree. Do you know what, it, do, you, do you ever have a fig? Do you ever have figs? Yeah, they're pretty good, right? I like them, right? They're, I think they're not to everyone's taste, but figs were very common in Palestine and figs produced fruit 10 months out of the year. So it was a rich source of food. But this particular fig tree had been planted for three years and it wasn't producing any fruit. So the, uh, the uh, owner of the fig tree says to the gardener, cut it down. And Jesus is the gardener. And he says, no, let it go another year, right? This is the mercy of God, right? This is how God always gives you and I second chances. That God's love for us is so profound that every morning we get up and we get to start all over again, right? And so the gardener says, no, let me cultivate it, right? Let me, let me water it, let me fertilize it, right? And what people fertilized the fig tree with was manure, right? right? And so, so Jesus was kind of giving a little bit of a humorous statement to the Pharisees and the Sadducees. In many ways, he was telling them that for three years you've been full of manure and you haven't produced anything, right? <laughs> right? Right? So, so Jesus is reminding the Pharisees and the Sadducees that, that be careful. You were sent by God as was Moses to give an image of God's love to the people who I've called my own. And you're not doing that. You're not doing that. You're not bearing fruit. Your words are not bearing fruit. There's no fruit on the, on, the, on the trees that you are planting. And he's warning them to be careful. And in this sense, what he's doing for, for me and Father Gidi and for all of the adults in your life, he's reminding us that we are to speak and act in ways that, that demonstrate to you the love of God, right? In, in real and profound ways. He's inviting us to be forgiving. He's inviting us to be merciful, right? He's inviting you the same thing, right? He's inviting you that when you're at school or when you're in a place in which you feel maybe angry at someone else to take a moment and breathe, right? And maybe pray for that person. The stranger in your midst, maybe the new kid in school or the new kid in your class, he's reminding us to reach our hand out to that person, right? And make that stranger welcome. Because he's reminding us that once we were all strangers, right? He's reminding us that we should never judge anyone else, right? Because when we do that, as Paul says, sometimes we're in the same boat as the people that we're judging, right? My sister always says to me, when I point my finger at somebody, I have three more pointing back at me, right? So I have to be really careful. So, so that's what I was thinking about the readings. What were you hearing today? Do you want to say anything? You can say, yeah, Rory. Friends. Our friends? Prayers. prayers. It's prayers, right? That, that, that the scripture, what Rory says, it invites us into prayers, right? It invites us into praying for each other, right? Very good, Rory. What else? Anybody else? How about Lila or Victoria behind me? <laughs> no? 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 Sean, you want to say anything? Uh, yeah. What were you talking about? What were we talking about? <laughs> I, I kind of like, I heard everything with the last one. It was kind of like, kind of lost in thought, you know. You were lost in thought. That's right. I was saying that we should be careful not to judge other people because we might find ourselves in in uh, in that same place. So yeah, so we just be careful. Yeah, well, a lot of he's like this new teacher in school, and a lot of my friends were grumpy at her because whenever she she doesn't get much done in her class because the whole class. Everybody talks a lot, and uh -huh. then there are all these nasty kids in the class, and then she yells at the all the class and makes everyone grumpy, especially the kids who weren't talking because they listened to her more. Uh -huh. But like I was later on, they were realizing that it's the, class discipline is hard, and they yeah. shouldn't really blame her. She's that she. She might just like not be very good at it. Very good. Very, Sean, isn't that, wasn't that very good? Yeah, yeah, very nice. Very nice. And, and Sean, so what you can do is, that's called empathy, right? You can empathize with that teacher, right? Because we've all been in positions sometimes where we feel like maybe we're not being heard, right? I have that 
feeling on Sundays pretty regularly. Right? So, <laughs> <laughs> what were you going to say, Luca? Luca? Come on, what were you going to say, buddy? Well, here, well, that's a good question. So here's the thing. Say, Matthew tells us, right, that heaven is right here. And so that's a very good question. That's a very sophisticated theological reading of, this, of the gospel today. But we all go to heaven. God loves us so much that he never wants to be away from us. And so constantly, uh, Lucas, constantly he's calling us into relationship with him, the way that he did with Moses, the way that the, that the gardener is doing with the fig tree. And so the desire for God is for us always to be with God where God is, right? And so, so this idea that we all have this opportunity to go to heaven in the sense that heaven is right here and now if we grow in loving God and each other then all of the things that become cumbersome or bothersome for us, right, if we do it with a grateful and loving heart, that all changes because love changes us. God, when I was uh, your age, we had to learn the Baltimore Catechism. And the first question the sisters would ask us is, uh, who made you? And we would always say, God made us. And the second question was, why did God make you? And we would all say in, in a sing-song chant, God made me to know, love, and serve him and to be happy with him in this world and the next. So heaven, Lucas, is our ability to be happy in a way that allows us to respect ourselves and all of those that are in the world with us, right? And that's the freedom that comes from love. So, so it's not that God punishes us, we do that to ourselves, right? Every time we get angry and we place ourselves outside of the of the relationship with our brothers and sisters or our mom and dad, right? We do that, right? They haven't done that to us. How many of you get angry and you stop your feet and I'm not talking to you, right? Right, That's, that doesn't feel good. That never feels good, right? So maybe we have to have that experience that can bring us back to the awareness that it's better if I am in communication with people that I love, right? And then our world feels a little happier and a little brighter, right? But the thing is, good question, God, God, God does nothing but love us and he wants us to be where he is all of the time. So it's really hard for us to, to do something that wouldn't get us to heaven. That would be a really hard thing to do, right? Now I'm not saying don't go do anything bad. That's not, <laughs> that's not permission to go steal a car, right? 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 Absolutely, right? What else? That's for all of you as well, by the way, right? So, right? So what else? Other questions? Other things? What are your, some of your thoughts? Do you like doing this? Should we do this maybe once a, once a month? Yes. No? Yeah, or, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I kind of like this, right? Yeah, I like it too. I like it too. Thank you for all your time and attention, right? Thanks for your hard work. I know that you're going to do a meditation hymn for us, right? I know you're going to do that. So why don't we do this? Let's stand and we'll say the creed and then we'll have the, the prayers of the faithful. And then during the celebration of the Eucharist, I'll ask you to come up around the altar with me. Is that all right? Would that be good? Yeah? You're not, nobody's answered me. <laughs> all right, let's stand and pray together. So let's say our, tell each other the story of our faith as we say we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, one in being with the Father. Through God all things were made, for us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered, died, and was buried. On the third day, he arose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, 
With the Father and the Son, He is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Almighty God, we offer you our, now our prayers and petitions in confidence through Christ our Lord. Please respond. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for the entire world that all may bear the fruit of God's love in their lives. We pray to the Lord, Lord, in, Lord, your, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless our parish community of St. Francis of Assisi, Bishop George, Father Judy, and all of the American National Catholic Church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, help us to recognize you by your name. In particular, please bless Gabriella Militello, Sally Marchese, Audrey Medler, and Melanie Ortiz as they prepare for their first Holy Communion. We pray to Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, take our hands during Lent and show us that. Help us get up when we fall, knowing that you will always give us another chance. We pray, we pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the people touched by pain and suffering, particularly children everywhere, that they may be strengthened by God's patient care. God, remember our sick, especially those we now name. Father. We pray for, to the Lord. Lord, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for those who have gone before us into eternal life, especially those we now name. Kathleen and Albie. We pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give God thanks today for this wonderful uh, gift of our children who have done uh, 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 for us what has been done for the ages. They proclaim the word of God to us, they've led us in prayer, and they show us by their example the simple way to the love of God. We ask God to continue to, to protect them and keep them at peace. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all of those petitions which are in the depths of our heart that God might hear and answer them. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, most high, glorious God, we bring you our prayers and petitions, those which we've spoken aloud and those in the depths of our heart. We ask you to hear and answer them if they be for our good, for we make them in the name of Christ, your Son. Amen. 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 Will lead you to 
your heart where I will speak integrity and justice with tenderness you shall know Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God. Almighty God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all God's name. Through the sacrifice of reconciliation, grant us in your mercy, Lord, that we who seek pardon for our own sins may also learn to forgive one another. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We'll lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and grace. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. In the waters of the Jordan you revealed a new baptism through signs and wonders. A voice came down from heaven to waken our faith in your word dwelling among us. Your spirit descended as a dove to make it known that Christ, your servant, was anointed with the oil of gladness and was sent to preach the good news to the poor. With joyful hearts, we echo on earth the song of the angels in heaven as they praise your glory without end. the children to come and join me around the altar. Here you come around this side. 
Thank you. Where's Lucas? <laughs> you are truly blessed, O God of holiness. You accompany us with love as we journey through life. Blessed too is your Son, Jesus Christ, who is present among us and whose love gathers us together. As once he did for his disciples, Christ now opens the scriptures for us and breaks the bread. Great and merciful Father, we ask you to send down your Holy Spirit to hallow these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the eve of his passion and death, while at table with those he loved, he took bread, he gave you thanks and praise, he broke the bread, gave it to all those whom he loved and said, take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and praise. And handing the cup to all of those whom he loved, he said, take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Let's all hold hands for the rest of the prayer, huh? And so, Father most holy, we celebrate the memory of Christ, your Son, whom you led through suffering and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection and a place at your right hand. Until Jesus, our Savior, comes again, we proclaim the work of your love, and we offer you the bread of life and the cup of eternal blessing. Look with favor on the offering of your church, in which you show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ entrusted to us. To the power of your spirit of love, include us now and forever among the members of your Son, whose body and blood we share. Almighty Father, by our sharing of this mystery, enliven us with your spirit and conform us to the image of your Son. Strengthen the bonds of our communion with the patriarchs of Alexandria, Antioch, Constantinople, Jerusalem, and Rome. George, our bishop, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and all your holy people. Keep your church alert in faith to the signs of the times and eager to accept the challenge of the gospel. Open our hearts to the needs of all humanity so that sharing their grief and anguish, their joy and hope, we may faithfully bring them to the good news of salvation and advance together on the way to your kingdom. Be mindful of our brothers and sisters, especially Albi and Kathleen, who have fallen asleep in the peace of Christ and all the dead whose faith only you can know. Lead them to the fullness of the resurrection and gladden them with the light of your face. When our pilgrimage on earth is complete, welcome us into your heavenly home where we shall dwell with you forever. There with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with the apostles and the martyrs, St. Basil the Great, and all the saints, we shall praise you and give you glory through Jesus Christ, your Son. Hold this. You want to hold the towels? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> Throw him with him in him in the unity of the Holy Spirit. 
All glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Let's hold hands. Now, Kate and Sister Maria tells me that they worked very hard with you on the Our Father, right? So, so, uh, so we're, I think somebody, as long as somebody, we're all holding one hand, right? You, you can join us across the aisle if you like, too, right? So, uh, let us pray with confidence to the Father in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin, and protect us from all anxiety, as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, for the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. So let's offer each other a sign of peace. Peace, Father. Peace. Peace, ladies. Peace. 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 Go ahead. Thanks, Mother. Thank you. Please, you know, don't say peace to the parents, right? So. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, peace, please. Peace, guys. Here, uh, Jaden, peace. Uh, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Well, uh, uh, you can go say peace, John. Uh, uh, go, you go, you can go back with your parents and say peace. Give them peace, all right? Peace, Rory. Peace, Clotha. Right? Hi, Eli. Hi, Victoria. Peace. Brothers, this is Jesus, our Lamb of God. This is Jesus who invites each and every one of us into the experience of God's love for us, and how happy are we to be called to His Supper. Lord, Lord I am not worthy to see you, but I will say the word, and I shall be you. Here at St. Francis of Assisi, each and every one of you are invited into full participation in the sacrament of the altar. May the body of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. May the blood of Christ bring us all to the rest of
Please join us in hymn 616, How Can I Keep From Singing?
parable of the lamp. No one lights a lamp, then hides it under the bed. Instead, they put it on a table so that everyone who comes in the room can see the light. In the same way, let your light shine before others. Do good works and give glory to God in heaven. Use the talents God gave you, big or little. Let your light shine. This parable helps us to understand the great commandments of loving God and our neighbor. It guides us for our Lent of actions, and we drew some of the things we're doing for Lent on the candles on the wall. Thank Loretta for uh, doing the accompaniment, right? So. And Sister Maria for conducting. I saw Sister Maria conducting, right? So. Children, that was absolutely beautiful. That was absolutely lovely. And, uh, and it will give you something in your uh, later years to remind your parents that you uh, did this at St. Francis, right? So, so uh, I'm so happy. Um, it really was a remarkable liturgy, and so I think um, we'll, in, we'll, we'll have you do that for us uh, maybe once a month. That would be lovely, right? So I'm sure you're so happy to hear that. Kate, Kate and Sister Maria have just quit, but, uh, but uh, so maybe you need to help them. So let us pray. Let us pray. Guide us always and everywhere, Lord, by your light from on high, so that we may discern with clear minds and treasure with deep affection the mystery you have given us to share. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. So welcome everyone. Today is our parish brunch, and I think we have some visitors. Do you want to identify? You want to uh, 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 say hi. Yes, yeah, say hi. Tell us who you are. Hi, I'm a visitor from Florida. Right. Uh, so, just so you know, Matt was at uh, St. Francis and St. Clair while I was there, so he can tell you I was really working. So, right? So, uh, and uh, Matt. <laughs> Matt, uh, did he say I didn't stop talking? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, there you have it. I'm the same there as I am here. Um, Matt has moved uh, to uh, Tarrytown and is working at uh, Montefiore. So, uh, as you know, we see you twice, Matt. We put you to work, right? Uh, Matt is a priest of the uh, Rockville Di uh, Diocese Centers in Long Island. So, uh, so welcome, Matt. Welcome. Uh, who else? We've got Sandra. Sandra Perez and my family. Thank you. Thank you. 
Welcome, Sandra. Welcome. Uh, welcome. Bienvenido. Uh, Ivan, yo practico mi español. Si? Si, uh, uh, Sandra is here at Offered Mass today in, in, uh, in memory of her husband who went home to God three years ago. So thank you for being with us, right? So, yeah. Other first timers? Yes? I'm Sarah. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We have other people from New York. Where are they? Did they? Uh, Ryan and. Uh, Ryan and, uh, and Tamara are over there in the corner. Uh, I married Ryan's sister and his cousin, and uh, I'm going to marry him and Tamara, which is really nice, right? So, so welcome, welcome. Uh, other visitors? Other? I see that there's uh, someone who just had a second anniversary is here with us. Regina. Right, right over here, right? Right? So. They're from New York as well. They're not telling us their names. <laughs> so our, our brunch is afterwards. Please join us on Wednesday evenings. We gather here uh, for, uh, as a Lenten observance for soup and, uh, and bread. And we fast. And then at, uh, the Easter Vigil will bring those things we fasted from for the poor. Uh, you may have noticed that Maureen is back with us. She had uh, an injury, Maureen and Pete. She had an injury to her arm. And... Uh, she is, I think, Marie, making some progress, but not, not back to your guitar not, strength, not right? Not fast enough. Not fast <laughs> enough, but it's nice to see you. It's so wonderful to see you and Pete. So we've been praying for you earnestly, I've right? Been hearing. Good, you've been hearing. You watch Mass, right? So it's just good. And I want to thank Terry, right, who, uh, despite his, uh, his illness, did a wonderful job leading us in song, right? So, so thank you, Terry. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, the next week we'll publish the Holy Week uh, uh, schedule and please join us for Holy Week. So bow down for the blessing. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Made heaven and earth. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Both now and, forever. and may Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go forth from this place in great peace and joy to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Join us for brunch. Our recessional hymn is uh, number 349, Change Our Hearts. Oh,